Rugby Championship 2021 gets back underway this weekend with the All Blacks taking on the Pumas. It's a double header. This is the first of the two games with the South Africans and the uh, the Wallabies going after this game from the Gold Coast. Uh, it should be a really interesting kind of few hours of rugby. Uh, the All Blacks obviously have been in Australia for a little bit longer, having been in Perth uh, recently. The Pumas, well, they've been in Australia. They've been in quarantine um, and we saw what happened last time the All Blacks played the Pumas coming out of quarantine, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a really interesting one to see how this one plays out. We will go through the squads, uh, some of the recent performances between the two sides, uh, some of the stats, the predictions, and you guys can let me know your thoughts. I think it's 5.05 in the, uh, in the evening local time, which makes it like 7 o'clock, I think local time over here in New Zealand, which is a pretty good rugby watching time. As far as I'm aware, because... The All Blacks and the Pumas and the, the Box, um, they obviously don't have any home games, but they will kind of draw one game as home, one game as away. So I think this is New Zealand's home game from memory, hence the kind of New Zealand friendly uh, kickoff time. But f from my memory, looking at the, the kickoffs, all the kickoffs New Zealand time seem to be pretty decent. Not so sure about Argentina, but anyway, um, recent times, it's generally been pretty lopsided with the All Blacks getting wins, but there is one... There is one blip in there, and that was last year, man, 25-15, when the Pumas got that famous victory over the All Blacks again, coming out of quarantine. It was, um, you know, it was massive. It was a massive result. But apart from that, it's been mostly the All Blacks. I mean, the following game was 38-0. So the All Blacks have tended to have the wood over the uh, the Pumas. The average score over the last five games is 31-16. So generally, uh, the All Blacks by at least a few tries. But uh, we'll see if it's... Uh, a little bit closer than that. So far, the standings, the Pumas are none from two. They've been in South Africa. They weren't able to get the job done. They never really looked all that threatening against the uh, the, the Springboks, whereas the All Blacks looked really actually quite threatening against the, uh, the Wallabies. They really racked up a lot of points, scored a lot of good tries. And from turnover ball, the All Blacks were absolutely lethal. So, um... Yeah, the, uh, the Pumas will need to be pretty safe uh, with their hands because any mistakes are likely to be punished. For the All Blacks, they've had to make a few changes. Uh, a couple of guys out with concussion, like some Adi Savia uh, and Cody Taylor, so injury and forced changes. Uh, Carl Tuinukuafe does get a start at loose head, and uh, Joe Moody is back as well, so it's his first game back for a while. He's on the bench. Uh, Almua gets a start. He's also back. I think he's had his own concussion for, uh, problems, and uh, Lolala is there, so it's... Um, it's an unfamiliar front row, I guess. At least these guys haven't played together in the last few weeks because uh, one of them has either been out or injured or uh, on the bench or whatever. So it's, it's a bit of a, a new combo, so we'll see how they go. Uh, Retallick and Scott Barrett, uh, same locks as last week. Akira and Dalton still 6-7 and seven with Luke Jacobson filling Adi Savia's spot uh, at number 8. And it does mean Brody Retallick is captain because, remember, uh, he was vice-captain last week until Adi went off. And then he steps in. So this week, uh, it's Bowden Barrett, who is the vice captain, in case anything happens to Brody. But fingers crossed, he stays fit. Um, I mean, Akira and Dalton have been a good combo. I talked them up last time. They were really kind of good cop, bad cop combo. Right? One does the tackling and the turnovers, and one does the big old runs, the defenders beating and offloads and stuff. So they're a really good duo. I'm really liking those guys, and they both play for the Blues. So uh, happy days. Uh, TJ Pedernada gets a start. He was on the bench last time. He's with Bowden Barrett. So... Uh, that's a, a, those guys have played loads of games together, uh, not in recent times, but yeah, don't expect them to have any issues. And I will be keen to see if, um, if they just seem to click a little bit better because they, as I said, have just played so many games together, which is, um, yeah, invaluable. Uh, Havili and ALB is, uh, the same midfield as last week. So it's good to get those guys some more minutes together because they don't play with each other at, uh, at club level. Uh, George Bridge gets a start. He's on the left wing. So that means Rico Iwane has to drop down to the bench. And Rico has been good, but if you're going to take George, you need to give him some minutes. So, uh, they are doing that this week. Seve Reese comes back into the squad. He's on the right wing. Uh, and Jordy Barrett is back there at 15 after being cleared of any wrongdoing. Um, uh, not that that's caused, the. Uh, <laughs> at uproar, but he is there at 15, um, keeping his balance this week, hopefully. Uh, Tokiaho Moody and Lomax is the uh, the front row replacement, so Moody, as I mentioned, being back in Lomax, first time he's got some minutes for a while. Uh, Vai is still there on the bench, Ethan Blackhead is still there, Brad Whipper drops to the bench, DMAC is still on the bench, and Rico, as I mentioned, uh, drops to the bench. There's a few guys kind of rotated out, Will Jordan's rotated out, um, Ta'avao, Bauer, all these guys um, just being rotated, I guess they need to 
spread the minutes around and you know yeah, it's a relatively short turnaround with the one uh less day but yeah we'll see how things go uh for the pumas they have made a few changes Hijena, uh montoja and medrano are the front row and it's it's usually been titas chaparro and cordella recently like most games those guys seem to start but neither of them's in the 23 which i found interesting if anyone's got any insights into why those guys aren't there uh do let me know it's not always easy to find um the updates for the spanish guys in the english media anyway uh but montoja's captain and he's been phenomenal turnovers and tackles and whatnot he is your man and um if you missed augustine crevy man montoja is your guy uh petty moves from the back row back into his more familiar second row at least at puma's level i know he plays a lot um in the loose kind of at club level but he's your man there and he'll be looking to get line out steals if possible that's it's kind of what he does. Alamano continues on. So Lavanini is on the bench. If you're looking for that kind of brute force replacement in the latter stages of the game, Matera, Crema, and Bruni are the back row. That's maybe been the most familiar back row we've seen from the Pumas in recent times. Um, Crema is up from the bench. He was last time, so he'll be looking to make his physical presence felt there as well because he is a, a big, big unit of a man. But to be fair, Bruni has been... Uh, in 2021, Bruni has been kind of the star of the show for me anyway, from the from the Pumas. Like, obviously, uh, Matera and um, and uh, Crema are big names, but Bruni has been just eating up the run meters, man. Ball in hand. The guy has been a really fun guy to watch. Uh, Bertrandu and Sanchez are 9-10. Initially, Sanchez, I think, was ruled out with injury like a week or two ago. They said he wasn't going to be fit to play, but he is fit to play. So he's a key man to have back, although I do feel for Miotti uh not getting the minutes um because man sanchez just plays 90 percent of the games doesn't he uh de la fuente and moroni is the 12 13 combo moroni is uh is back into the 23 didn't play last week and he hasn't played 13 i think since earlier in 2021 when they were playing over in europe so um yeah experienced guy good to have and um they will they'll be a different challenge to what the all blacks saw from the likes of karibi last week very very kind of different, more like playmaking skills uh, than, than a brute force kind of midfield. So uh, I'm sure David Havili is not complaining about that. Uh, Cordero and Moroni, not Moroni, Cordero and uh, Delgi. Moroni can play on the wing if he needs to, but uh, it's Delgi and uh, Cordero as the wingers. So they're both back into the 23, both very quick. Not the biggest guys, so maybe under the high ball is an area where the uh, the All Blacks can kind of challenge them. And then uh, Malia is still there at fullback. The bench, Bosch, Muzio comes back in and he's a one cap. Back when they were in South Africa, Pieretto, Lavalini, like I mentioned, Gonzalez, that's Juan Martin Gonzalez. He's looked a very busy replacement. I'm still kind of learning about that guy. Uh, Gonzalo Garcia is going to get his debut as the replacement scrum half. I don't know much about him at all. Chocobares drops to the bench and Boffelli is a good guy to have on the bench to add a bit of impact. He's one of the kind of taller outside backs uh, in Argentina. So if they are getting struggles under the high ball, he's a good guy to bring on. Um, Carreras is injured, I believe. And yeah, I'm not sure why there's no Titus Chaparro and Cordella, but someone will let us know. Uh, statistically, the two sides, man, New Zealand's putting up some really good numbers in 2021. I know Fozzie doesn't have that many. He's got his fans, but he's got his detractors as well. But man, like New Zealand's stats have been really nice. They're averaging 19 clean breaks a game, which I don't have to tell you is a lot. That's a lot of clean breaks. That means they're getting into some serious space. And you've got to take into account we played uh, Tonga to start with. I think it was like 21 clean breaks in that game. But if you take off the games against Tonga and uh, Fiji, even against Australia, those three games, averaging 13 clean breaks a game. So the All Blacks were able to find a heck of a lot of space and uh, you know make the Aussie defense look pretty ordinary at times. So Argentina is going to have to be very careful because, as I said, turnover ball... The All Blacks guys are lethal. They're averaging six plus run meters a carry. It's nice to get four. All of the teams in the rugby championship, bar the All Blacks, are averaging under four run meters per carry. Uh, what are they at? Like Argentina's 3.1, South Africa's 3.5, Australia's 3.8. The All Blacks are at six, which just shows you how effective the carrying is. It also shows you getting intercepts. Intercepts you, you clean up with the run meters in one go. But yeah, man, that's very very good numbers from the all blacks ball in hand have just been absolutely lethal but you don't want it really this game to come down to goal kicks because the all blacks goal kicking percentages have been been pretty poor and like the 60 percent so yeah pretty pretty average stuff but to be fair argentina haven't been that much better in 2021 uh a couple of good games but a few games with some 
pretty inaccurate goal kicking. Um, Argentina, ball from hand though, tend to kick more than most of the teams. Maybe not quite as much as South Africa. Similar. Um, but yeah, they're going to have to be spot on because again, the All Blacks from kick return can definitely hurt you. But we saw that when they played in the, the game where they won last year. The, the um, Argentinians kicked tactically uh, really well. So they're going to have to going to have to do that especially if you're only getting 3.1 run meters a carry you're probably not going to be able to go length of the field busting that up with carry after carry eventually the all blacks are going to turn you over so yeah they're going to have to be tactically very smart um and good at the breakdown because argentina's ruck numbers in this year uh are looking a little bit weak as well the all blacks give them turnover ball like i mentioned they're going to be dangerous so uh, yeah, it looks like a tough ask for the Argentinians, but last year it looked like Mission Impossible as well, uh, and look what we saw. Um, as I mentioned, the average score in the recent games has been 31-16 over the last five to the All Blacks. Uh, the rugby forecast algorithm says the All Blacks by 19, so kind of similar to what we've seen from those recent results. Uh, the bookies, at least over here in New Zealand, have got it by even more, saying by 23. 23 points so um yeah it is going to be an interesting one uh the scrum battle will be interesting with with changes on both sides uh there line outs uh i think both sides numbers have been have been pretty steady but um yeah on paper anyway the all blacks should be getting this one done relatively comfortably but right off the Pumas uh, at your peril. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you think this one's going to play out? Do you think the Pumas can give us another shock like last year? Or do you think the All Blacks, who have been looking remarkably good, are just going to keep that run going? You guys let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you guys soon.